okay, so now I'm here with my buddy Juan here, and he smuggles tuk-tuks and coconuts out of the Philippines <laughs> into Russia. There's a big market for it here. And he's modifying them with skis for the winter, so we're going to have tuk-tuks with skis. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so give us a quick introduction to who you are besides the, you know, the tuk-tuk coconuts. Yeah, so, <clears throat> yeah, my name's Juan Paulo, and um, I came from the Philippines. I'm from the Philippines. So I've been here in Russia for more than two years now. I'm a student and uh, taking up my master's. Uh, I'm also working part time, and uh, yeah, basically that's it. And you know, you obviously don't look well. What people would think is Russian. Of course, we do have Asian Russians too, but most people wouldn't think you're Russian. Do you experience any problems or? Well, the most problem that I've experienced is that uh, you know those Russians that come from the north, they they speak a different language and those mm -hmm. coming from Uzbekistan. So uh, I remember going to this uh, market, Rinok, and uh, this one guy started speaking to me in Uzbekistan. And I was mm -hmm. like, I mean, my Russian is not that bad, but I, I couldn't understand. Is <laughs> my Uzbek is really worse. I couldn't understand like, the thing. Cloth, cloth, cloth. And <laughs> yeah, they think uh, when you're a bit Russian Asian, uh, you're Muslim. So I get a lot of, you know, like, salam alaikum. And mm -hmm. then, like, uh, but basically, that's it. I haven't had any problem with, with, with anything like that. And how about the dating scene? You got any, you know? No, the dating scene. Well, uh, oh my God! Like, how how would I start? Like, um, um, I guess um, Russian women are curious, curious with 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 Filipinos, especially that mm -hmm. we don't have lots of Filipinos here in in in, in Russia, uh, like in Moscow, especially here in Saint Petersburg. Um, most of the Filipinos here are. You know, 90, 95% they're women because mm -hmm. of the work that they do here. Most of them teach English. Uh, they work as nannies. They work as cleaners and all of, all of these things. And, uh, it's very rare for 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 a Filipino guy to, to move to Moscow, I mean, mm -hmm. or to Russia. And so with the dating scene, like, uh, I guess it's... I guess it's pretty difficult in the beginning because of the of the language. Uh, it's it's really hard to to learn the language. I mean, with my two years, I I can barely speak Russian, but uh, I can survive. Yeah. yeah. And how long you been here total? Uh, I went here twenty fifth of March two years ago, so it's around two years, three months, four months, mm -hmm. some, something like that. And what what brought you to Russia? Was it the women or? Well, <laughs> to be honest, <laughs> well, to be honest, the first choice that I had was hmm. uh, to study in Canada. It was what my mom's choice actually. To, she was she encouraged me to uh, take up my masters and uh, to <clears throat> to move to Canada. Mm -hmm. So I waited for like nine, ten months for my visa. But uh, in fact, I already already paid like around twenty thousand dollars for for half a year. Because you cannot get your visa processed without you know, paying the tuition fees and mm -hmm. everything. So I waited for like several months and they didn't actually give me my visa. So okay, I didn't give up. The next place, the next uh, choice that I had was Germany. Mm -hmm. And same same, re same uh, situation. I get my visa from, from Germany, from Europe. <laughs> and so like, okay, I still didn't give up. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I... I came across this university in Russia, uh, and then they immediately gave me my invitation. And after mm -hmm. that, like I applied for a visa. After three days, I got my visa. After two weeks, three days. Yeah, it wasn't even. Well, I it thought Russia was full of bureaucracy and impossible <laughs> to deal with. I mean, no, it wasn't even the express one because I could have paid like maybe twice or thrice, and they'll give it to you the next day. Hmm. And but three days was okay. Yeah, three days <laughs> comparing to three. I mean, like. Nine months from waiting from Ca for, for Canada. And, and how easy was it, I mean, as far as applying compared to applying to Canada and Germany, the paperwork and the things you had to apply Well, I'll let you in, in, in a little bit of a secret. Uh, when I started applying, it was when the special operations for Ukraine was going on. It was mm. around February during the first, uh, you know, wave of, 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 of operations. So, like, spell her operation, like, let's go to Russian study there. <laughs> And like my family was, all of them, all of them were. were so like, you started the application before or after the special? Right after it was. Okay. I, so if it I'm not mistaken, yeah. You, okay. If I 
if I'm not mistaken, the operation started 24th, 25th of February. And after that, I started applying. And so obviously, you, they gave you the visa, you got drafted, you went and fought in Ukraine for a while. <laughs> no, no, no. No, it's, it, but my family was thinking, you know, there's a war in, where's, there's a war going on in Russia. I shouldn't go. Mm-hmm. Everyone was against me. I remember me and my mom had a huge fight. Uh, like, yeah. No, really, because I really just wanted to leave the, the country, you know, mm-hmm. like I just really wanted to uh, explore the world and study elsewhere. Like, uh, yeah, of course, I graduated from one of the top universities in the Philippines and uh, I still wanted to do more. I was still wanted to achieve more. And, you know, like uh, maybe Russia is a good place to to or maybe other other countries is a mm-hmm. good place to are, are good places to you know further my education and you know just uh, boost my career because uh, if you know the Philippines is uh, a country it's a poor country you know it's still a third world country and <clears throat> well it's an even, economically disadvantaged country you can you can you can say it that way yeah I think it's a kinder way yeah it's a I think it's way. a very rich country but maybe it's not the very best rich, economically yeah not the best economically and even though you have very high qualifications, like you 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 finished college already, you have your master's degree, mm-hmm. and even if you have your PhD, they don't pay enough. And uh, of course, I have my own goals, I have my own targets, and I don't think uh, working in the Philippines or spending the rest of my life in the Philippines would would actually get me to my goal. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I decided to to move to another country. And how do you study in a school here if you don't speak Russian? Well, I do speak Russian. Mm-hmm. Uh, first year was uh, all about Russian language, and mm-hmm. uh, it's called a foundation course. So uh, I'm not into the formal course yet. So uh, it's all about learning your Russian. It took me around uh, six, seven hours a day learning just Russian, Russian culture, and everything. And then I went. So sitting around eating beets and mayonnaise and <laughs> cabbage. And, yeah, that's a lot of cabbage. You eat six, seven hours a day. A lot of kapustas <laughs> and <laughs> mayonnaise. Gretchka. <laughs> Gretchka. Yeah. Well, yeah. So. Holidays. <laughs> holidays. Oh, I love it. Yeah. First, uh, you, you know, you, the you heard my holidays song, right? <laughs> no, yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Should we tell the audience again? Yeah, of course. So. I, I'm writing some Russian music now, and it goes, Holy Dietz, Holy Dietz, Ete ni Moly Dietz, Holy Dietz, Holy Dietz, Ete Piz Dietz. They shouldn't. I don't know, if, you know what it means. If, if, if any Russians out there want to write some music to that yeah, tune, yeah, we can yeah. get a jingle. That'd be like my, my podcast jingle. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> More yeah, minion so. juice just arrived. 95 rubles for half a liter. Can you imagine? That's like a so, dollar. For half a liter of minion juice. So unbelievable. So you, unbelievable. you study in Russian or your courses are in English? Because there are many people studying English here. Yeah, me, I study in, in Russian. Oh, basically in okay. Russian. Yeah. So good thing about it is like um, a lot of my fr- a lot of my classmates are really helping me out. Like uh, just like today, I just received like you know like we have a group chat and you know when you when they love foreigners, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, I'm 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 practically the only foreigner in our class you know all of them are russians and so uh, i find it really difficult to understand the lesson and so when we have group works homeworks mm-hmm. assignments they're very helpful you know like uh, i really appreciate them a lot how do you do the test then i do the test in russian so in the year that i've been studying the the language i've already learned how to write and read uh, mm-hmm. even in script i can so, oh wow wow yeah so it took me a year and uh, to be honest, I don't regret a single day of, of learning Russian because mm-hmm. Russia, I think, is Russian language. I think is one of the richest languages. It's spoken even in 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 other, like for example, former Soviet Soviet republics. You know, mm-hmm. and even even I was talking to uh, Ukrainian. Uh, of course, the alphabet will be would be there. There's slight differences in the mm-hmm. alphabet, but. Uh, Everything is almost the same. It's just like maybe the the accent or or, or, or the way it's spelled or the way how how you you say it. But mm-hmm. if someone starts talking to me in Ukrainian or someone some Ukrainian starts talking to a Russian in Ukrainian, they would most likely understand each other by you know seventy eighty percent. Yeah, because yeah, it's, it's really TV. yeah it's it's really that close. And so uh, of course with other 
uh, former Soviet republics and uh, of course. And how about your living conditions? I mean, as a student, you must be poor and living in some kind of shack on the street or something, right? <laughs> Actually, no. I mean, uh, as I've told you, I do part-time jobs and mm -hmm. I, uh, I do teach English sometimes and I, I work for a call center. And actually, no, I mean, the, 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 it, it's quite decent. Mm -hmm. um, you can live off uh, quite decently with the income that you're oh, wait, getting. Wait, wait, a student can work, you can be a full-time student? No, no, uh, a student can only work for 20 hours. No, no but you're, you're a full-time student, right? I'm a full, full-time student. And you work yeah. 20 hours a week? I work 20 hours a week, yeah. And you're surviving on that? Yeah. I mean, like, if you have these... Uh, and you don't live in a tent? Or sleep in the metro at night? No, I mean, no? I, I still get the pleasure of, you know, like visiting other other places. I can afford to like... Uh, How'd you do, afford do... to come to St. Petersburg? Did you like hang on the back of the train? <laughs> no. <laughs> At 20, uh, hour, 20 hours a week, I mean, I just... Well, that's... The, yeah, of course, you can do a little bit of excess work. I mean, or extra work or something like that. But I'm just like saying, how, how do you live? I mean, you must live in a really rat-infested apartment. No, I don't. I, you must no, live not like, at all. You must live like three hours from Moscow, because <laughs> Moscow is one of the most expensive cities in the world, they say. Well, actually, to be honest, uh, Chad, um, I live around three and a half, four kilometers away from the center center of Moscow, from the Kremlin. Oh, so the Kremlin pays you. <laughs> no, You're no. a propagandist like me. No, of course not, Chad. Like... <laughs> Yeah, and uh, with, with the English classes, it pays a lot if you actually know English. Because in the center of Moscow, people are willing to pay you know uh, English teachers good money for 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 tutorials, classes, and online uh, uh, you know jobs. And of course, uh, I do some other things you know uh, besides that. And so I got I got it all almost together, you know. You know so. Um, with the flat that I live, it's not it's not a bad flat. It's not a it's not a billionaire's flat, of course, but it's a pretty decent one. It's one it's located in one of the you know better districts in Moscow, in the center of so Moscow. So Moscow has bad districts. You're saying there's like ghettos? No, no. I mean like the better ones. I mean like where where people are. I haven't seen any ghettos in Moscow. You sure? To be honest, to be honest. The Americans are always telling me there's ghettos. I can't find them, but you know. My uncles, my 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 the brothers of my my father and my, both my mothers and my father's side, they've been telling me, maybe they've been getting this idea from the old old Soviet uh, Union, mm -hmm. but now, uh, what when I got here, it was totally different. It's what it was. To be honest, it was the opposite of what they said. It's not. So were you surprised when you came? I, I mean, was, what were you expecting? I, mean, I what, was. What was your biggest? misconception that got blown apart when you got here well i was expecting that the people were you know like harsh or hard on on, on foreigners but it was total opposite mm -hmm. i have friends in in Kamovniki and i've got you know like uh, uh my best friends russian and uh, they sort of adopted me in a way uh, you know like uh, almost every weekend i go to the dacha mm -hmm. i have my own room there uh, you know, like the babu, the babushka is, you know, always cooking awesome meals. You know, it makes mm -hmm. great borscht. And so the the dacha is outside the city, but I I've been told that outside the city it's just all poverty. And once you leave ten oh miles my outside God, the city, you see it's the complete dacha. poverty, and it's just you mud holes and dacha. people pee in the streets. And I mean, like it's all so nice. It's like a paradise with so flowers. So your friends must everywhere. be super rich. No, they're not super no. rich. They're not super rich. Are they foreigners? No, they're, they work they're for both, the Kremlin. <laughs> they're both Russians. But they're that's, that's impossible. Chad, I'm telling you. I am telling you. Now you should see the dacha. Uh, in fact, like maybe if I get the chance, I'll send you some, uh, you know, pictures and you know, videos of the dacha. You should see if they bring me to the dacha, and I'll, I'll do a film out there. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. Um, but uh, right now, the babushka. Uh, yeah, we do some shashliks. We do the kazan. We do the everything there uh, right now summer we we planted some tomatoes and uh, so you don't have zucchinis. enough for food you have to plant your own food <laughs> no it's just that <laughs> we have uh, the, the babulia has the greenhouse and everything she plants her own food and uh, so she's poor she has to plant her own food of course not she she, <laughs> she has a flat in in the center of moscow that she rents out so she works and, for the kremlin <laughs> <laughs> of course not you see that that's the that's the thing about about people you know like thinking about you know having the these wrong impressions about russia it's it's totally different when i got here i was totally blown with what i saw i mean like what i'm seeing now 
it's totally different. The, the place, the first place I saw was in uh, this was in Vidinka, and I t mm -hmm. fell in love instantly. This is complex with full of you know like maybe at least ten hot twenty Russian museums. Woman. Museums, yeah. Hot Russian woman. Yeah, of course, full <laughs> of you know, and the women here, you know, of course, it's not it's not a question. Russian girls are, are one of the loveliest, if not the loveliest women that I've ever seen. They're not discriminatory because you're a foreigner. Well, I wouldn't say um, there's discrimination, but I guess there would be, but not as much. You know, Chad, it's it's not mm -hmm. as much as uh, Asians are discriminated in, in, of course, in every place that you go. I mean, that's just me, you know, like there's, there's some kind of discrimination when you're not white. I'm yellow, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not black. I'm not. On the Caribbean, they called me red. <laughs> no, seriously, they were like, in the Caribbean, we don't call it, at least West Indies, they don't say white or black. They say clear or dark. But because oh. I'm, I'm normally very tan, I have a darker complexion, they used to call me red. I see. Uh-huh. Yeah, but me, uh, I'm, I'm, by Philippine standards, mm -hmm. I'm more on the lighter side because um, I do have, uh, I do have, uh, you know, like uh, Chinese and uh, Spanish mm -hmm. uh, blood. So, because my, my parents, my grandparents, my grand grandparents have, uh, you know, Chinese and Spanish origins. So you make so. really good Szechuan paella. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Szechuan <laughs> paella. <Szechuan. laughs> and so, yeah, like, um, you know, I'm, our family is, you know, mm. like, uh, we got the certificate just a few months ago that we're one of uh, five families left in, in, the, in, the, in the region who mm -hmm. still has the, you know, origins from, from Spain. And so I'm, I'm quite huge uh, in terms of Philippine standards. I'm mm -hmm. quite taller. And so, yeah, so I don't get a lot of uh, discrimination. But I guess when it comes to discrimination, I haven't felt it directly, you know, like, mm -hmm. but like I what guess. What kind of? I mean, is it racism? I guess, or just, no, 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 I guess they're, they're curious. They're curious no. of, of who I am because mm -hmm. not a lot of people can tell that I'm Filipino. Mm -hmm. Most, uh, mostly, they, they they think I'm Chinese, Korean, or or yeah, like like what I said earlier, Uzbekistan or Yakutsk mm -hmm. or or this other region, Buryati, yeah. Buryati, yeah, because of my eyes, it's really close to China. That's why maybe people there have mm -hmm. the same chinky eyes as as Chinese people. I don't think say chinky on YouTube. Or yeah, I don't know. I don't know. YouTube might. <gasps> it's okay if you say it. I think if I, say, I but I said it too. I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? Is it? I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, in terms of discrimination, even though I see a lot of, you know, in Moscow, there are quite uh, a number of, of, of colored people already. I don't I don't see a lot of discrimination, like, uh, mm -hmm. at all. I mean, from, from my experience, talking mm -hmm. from my experience, I haven't seen, like, huge amount of discrimination. In fact, sometimes they love you more. Mm -hmm. Like, I've had these friends and they... They, they love you a long time. <laughs> That's an old movie reference. You may not even get it. <laughs> I mean, uh, when I'm when I'm free, they, they, they show up in front of my house. They we, we go for they harass walks. you and throw uh, bottles at the house. <laughs> exactly. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly the opposite. I was saying. Yeah. I mean, like they're kind and they're nice. I love Russian people. You know, like uh, uh, the culture and everything, and uh, of course. When I got here, the, arch the architecture, the buildings, the places, the cleanliness of, of, of the whole uh, city that I... But Russia is obviously very dirty. Of course not. You know, I've, I've never seen, you know, like uh, in our country, those uh, sweeper trucks. And mm -hmm. li like right now, it's, it's in the summer. They've got trucks that spray water mm -hmm. just to, you know, get rid of the dust maybe and clean everything. Mm -hmm. And for me, I was very very surprised because we didn't have that in the philippines to be honest and uh, the cleanliness is really uh, you can't you can't even see you know like cigarette butts or, or well there are places of course like but compared to to my country i mean i have nothing against the philippines but i'm just stating facts chad like yeah uh moscow is really really like Super clean, super beautiful. And what about outside of Moscow, though? I mean, Moscow. They say Moscow is not Russia. Well, they say that. I've been, I've been to the outside of uh, Moscow, the Dachas and the oblasts, 
yes, of course, the roads sometimes are, are not that good. But in terms of, you know, people, cleanliness and everything, I think it's it's way, way better still than than, than what we have in, in mm -hmm. the countryside in my country. Because I also live in the provinces. And in the province, uh, it's called the uh, Bicol region and mm -hmm. uh, Naga City. In, the, in Naga City, uh, I live in Kamaligan. Kamaligan is a very small town around uh, 15,000, 20,000 population, and mm -hmm. that's it. And, uh, you know, the poverty there is really, I mean, I mean it's getting worse. Uh, the, the distance between rich people, uh, the, 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 the rich poor gap is steadily steadily ever ever increasing and uh, it's it's quite frustrating and it's uh, one of the reasons also that I I, I, I wanted to change of I wanted the change of environment I wanted to you know explore the world more mm -hmm. well initially I didn't really plan to like stay here for good but I'm starting to feel mm -hmm. that I want to stay here for good like like just finish my masters and probably go back and mm -hmm. you know find uh, good opportunity in, in, in the Philippines with a with better, you know, like uh, resume with my masters. But mm -hmm. right now, I'm starting to feel like... And what I are really... you studying? You didn't mention that either. Ah, I'm studying actually uh, management, project mm -hmm. management. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's that's what I'm uh, trying to do, like climb the cor corporate ladder. And you that. think your Russian degree will be usable somewhere else? Well, of course, in in Moscow it would be usable, and uh, it's it's a program. Uh, Synergy University is already an international university. It is, it has uh, campuses in Dubai and everything, and so they have your you'll you'll have your diplomas, uh, international diploma as well as your your Russian diploma. So mm -hmm. when I when I have that, uh, it would be great for me. Maybe a sanctioned diploma. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Because for me, I'm not really scared of of, mm -hmm. of of not getting of them not honoring the Russian degree. Degrees are just for me like I mean the, the certificates or the diplomas are just papers. Mm -hmm. uh, when you get to a certain age, it's all about experience, I guess, mm -hmm. and uh, what you can really do. I mean, you can lie, you can you can just pretend to have this and that, but uh, when you get to the job, uh, eventually they'll find find out mm -hmm. if you have the capacity to do so or you're <laughs> able to do. Uh, what what you say you're mm -hmm. doing um, and so yeah uh, for me I guess I, I would wanna I would I would wanna stay here I mean some pigeons just <laughs> a whole batch of pigeons flew up and yeah they, just flew they threw up. all the cotton wood from the trees that were covering our minion juices yeah it's the pollen <laughs> pollen yeah some kid ran through a batch of pigeons they all went <laughs> so <laughs> So if, if you were to leave Russia, um, you know, what would you miss the most? Well, it's really hard to tell. It's really hard to say. I would miss everything. I would miss the country. Mm -hmm. And for me, leaving Russia would be very hard now. I mean, it would be very sad. I just fell in love with the place. I just fell in love with the people. I just fell in love with the country and everything. Uh, I, I I have no words, really, how to. Well, not the food, of course. <laughs> the food, I mean, it's not the best food, you know, it's not the best I, I cuisine. I like the food, so I don't know. I, I think For we me. have everything here, anyway. So we have yeah, and American it, food, we have good Georgian food, we have everything. But I like Russian food myself. So, mm, but I've been yeah, you know. For me, like, uh, I'm I'm pretty simple. I I, I like my country's food you know so uh, mm -hmm. yeah the good thing is everything you can buy here like mm -hmm. uh, just some ingredients that uh, you know that's indigenous to the Philippines you cannot you can't get but mm -hmm. right now I what I'm for what I'm seeing from the stores especially if you go to like this huge like um, Tangovi centers or these magazines they have everything already mm -hmm. in it it's not really hard to replicate your your, your national dish or for example like, mm -hmm. I want to get adobo. I can. There's soy sauce. There's 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 garlic. There's uh, everything that you need, basically. Mm -hmm. And you don't you don't need to go far away. And everything. I think we've so had trouble getting our plantains, but apparently <laughs> Pedro Cristo carries them sometimes. But we've not seen them yet. Because one of my kids really misses plantains from the Caribbean. Yeah, Pedro Cristo does. Uh, yeah, maybe. It, yeah, it sometimes. Can have, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. One of the guys and, from Spain says they care, but he sees it. But I'm obviously yeah. So every time I go there, I look for plantains. But so far, yeah. But and also for us, uh, us Filipinos, especially in, from our region, we cook mm-hmm. we cook uh, with so much uh, coconut milk. And oh, yeah, yeah. I was surprised. I was I was thinking I would never taste coconut no, you find milk. It here. Yeah, you find it here. Coconut milk ever again. And when yeah, I came we, we here, it. it's everywhere. Yeah, it's it's everywhere. everywhere. So you can cook whatever you want. That's and, why you're bringing the whole coconuts and the tuk tuks. <laughs> Yeah, that's why. <laughs> well, yeah. So, what else can I say? Everything's so green. Everything's well kept. The buildings mm-hmm. are well kept. You know, like, uh, I, it's just something with with the character of the buildings that they kept it for. Like, I don't know. I I've seen buildings which were uh, built. I don't know, like hundred years, two hundred years ago, and they're keeping it. Mm-hmm. And that's one uh, nice thing that I really appreciate about you know in general moscow i mean in general russia especially in moscow. well even like nevsky mall once you go inside it's a shopping mall but they kept the facade exactly so they tore down the inner they tore it because the building is old and they they were given to turn the, the inside yeah but they kept the facade so when you go buy it you have no idea it's a shopping mall i exactly. mean it looks like just a historic building but then you go inside and it's like whoa this is like a modern shopping mall yeah exactly like uh, for example the goom as well in in, in moscow like you mm-hmm. know like you'd have yeah, right, right before the sand. Oh, the Goom is something totally different, but yeah, wow. I mean, you have there your, your luxury brands. It's, it's contrary to what everybody's thinking that, you know, we don't have those products, we don't have everything. You'll be surprised with the amount of, you know, like Benzes and Lamborghinis and Porsches in Moscow. Like, like especially like right around this time, it's summer, they can, you know, like speed, or, uh, I mean, like drive around Moscow with their huge... I mean, with their loud, loud pipes, and you'd be surprised with these cars. You can find mm-hmm. them here, even Rolls Royces and uh, you know, Bentleys, and everything's here. And uh, it's contrary to what people believe that you know, like we, we we drive you know Soviet brand cars like the Ladas and the Skodas. Yeah, we have them too, but yeah, but uh, it's contrary to what people say, really. And uh, as I've told you earlier, you know. I've seen my uncles, my family, they have the wrong idea about, Mm -hmm. even my friends, they have the wrong idea about Russia. It's just because maybe I think they haven't been here and they haven't, uh, we don't have really um, a lot of, you know, channels or or ways to see what's really going on. And Mm -hmm. in my own way, in my own small way, I try to post some of those uh, things that I see uh, in my own social media. Mm -hmm. But that's it. I can only reach, you know, a couple of hundred people. And I, I, I'm really concentrating in my studies and my work. So I don't really have enough time to do that. But, you know, for everyone to see Moscow, I mean, you guys really need to visit or at least see Moscow for it's, what it's it is. It's unlike any other I mean, it's just, it's, country. Yeah, I mean, it's Russia. Like, you know, I, I've, I've not traveled around to Asia a lot. Uh, so I've been to Singapore. So maybe Singapore might be a comparable to Hong Kong. I've not been to Hong Kong or some Chinese. I've been to Hong know. Kong as well. Uh, but Moscow yeah. for me, and I've been to close to 70 countries. It's just like, there's no other city like it. I mean, St. Petersburg is my favorite. I do like Moscow a lot, yeah. but I love St. Petersburg. But I would say Moscow is just, I don't know. It, it's just, it's, it's so different. Even St. Saint, Saint Petersburg is kind of like a combination of Paris. And, and Netherlands. Um, and yeah, A combination yeah. of Paris, Amsterdam, um, Venice. It, you know, it has a bit of everything. Germany yeah. too. I but say, it's still I unique say, on its own. But Moscow is just like I don't know. It, it's, it's different. Just, yeah, it's it's really it's different. different. It's it's very I mean, like, modern and very. Here in Saint Petersburg, it's more European than yeah, than yeah. in Moscow. But but in Moscow, the you'd see like it's really really Russian. I mean like um, even even I, even with the culture of, of people. Mm-hmm. Like, here in Saint Petersburg, I see that people are more chilled. Yeah yeah They're yeah. More it feels relaxed, like a town. Yeah. yeah. And uh, they're more laid back and they're more open. Uh, St. Petersburg is, you know, the cultural capital of, of Russia. And, you know, yeah. you, you get a good mix of artists, singers, mm-hmm. musicians and everything. And, uh, of course, uh, the, the art culture here and uh, everything is, is yeah, way better than and theaters. And I mean, of museums. course, Moscow some too, but St. Petersburg is on another level. Exactly. The Hermitage and, you yeah. know. All these things, and so I love Saint Petersburg. I love visiting Saint Petersburg, but yeah, uh, we're different. Uh, Moscow is still my city, you know. Like mm-hmm. Moscow is Moscow for me. And, well, uh, what else? Like I love about my city, Moscow. 
if you see these things, it's flowers everywhere, the parks. Mm. Parks, yeah. Mos I mean, St. Petersburg, too. Museums. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, generally yeah. in Russia. Yeah, you, you can go more. to a small city and, and there'll still be parks. And I see children always playing the, uh, we call it here, the Detsky Plosha. Uh, it's like a... The kids, kids Square. Yeah, Kids Square. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, you don't see... The playground, uh, playground. The playground, you know, still a lot of kids play in the playground. And it's, uh, I love that they have these common spaces all the time. You, you'll see mm -hmm. benches everywhere. You'll see like, uh, you know, uh, gardens and uh, mm -hmm. good places to walk. It's really built for, you know, people. Mm -hmm. Moscow is built for people who, who walk around, you know, like uh, sidewalks are not this big it's really and huge. people are not this big yeah <laughs> it's huge man i mean like you can even i see these cleaners they can take a tractor to the sidewalk and uh -huh. clean everything from yeah. you know like uh, they can spray and, and water at night, you know at night a lot of people don't realize this tourists but at night when people are not as many out the cleaners come out i exactly. mean they, clean the, they spray down the sidewalks with water they come out i mean an army of cleaners come out at night exactly. even in small russian cities exactly and I, I was surprised because it, it's in the morning when you wake up it's always wow super clean not even like the, the leaves they take it out mm -hmm. you know like uh they clean everything out and so it's it's a pleasure to walk our streets I mean, the, are cleaner than the than like the inside of the new york metros and things exactly because you know i don't mess up my shoes a lot in moscow yeah you don't it's amazing That's, i i, I don't really think about it like i go home and sometimes like because uh, when you go to a Russian home, you got to take your shoes off. Oh, yeah, yeah. But sometimes I'm like, I forgot something. And I look at the bottom of my shoes. I'm like, they look pretty clean, actually. <laughs> you know? Yeah, you know, I, I was quite surprised. Because in the Philippines, you know, it's a, it's a damp country. It's a tropical country. It rains every, every, every time, you know. So it's, yeah. we got these tropical monsoons all the time. And so you get, to, I get, my shoes get met, messed up uh -huh. so bad, you know. Like, and uh, in Moscow, what I appreciate during the winter is that, you know, you can, uh, you, you can just, walk without using your boots i mean man like the streets are kept snow free ice free and they they, they put everything there so, so much oil we heat the streets here <laughs> <laughs> we got so much gas we can melt the whole snow <laughs> uh, yeah but, yeah but i think it's a very rich country and one of the reasons also is like i looked at the potential of the country's economy and uh, for me but it's the economy is crashing from all the sanctions of course not i mean <laughs> For me, energy, energy is king. Energy is king, and uh, not not the paper, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And with it, Russia being, you know, like the biggest country in the world in terms of territory, has a lot of potentials in terms of energy. And with that, if I'm gonna choose a country, I mean, to choose between countries with, like, for the for example, our country, the Philippines, we don't have so much energy resource, so. We, we import our energy from, mm -hmm. you know, other countries. And it's been hard on us. I mean, it's hard for us because we're, we're paying premium on, on, on energy. Gas prices, ga uh, uh, petroleum prices, gasoline, diesel, and everything. We're paying a premium because they, uh, they have to bring it to the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So we, it affects the whole economy. Uh, when I told my mom, like, in terms, like, in the peso, it's, Gas prices here are like 25 pesos, 30 pesos. In the Philippines is like, no, I don't know, like 70 pesos, 80 pesos. I'm not really sure. I haven't checked yet. It's like, what's your electric bill? Do you know what your electric bill is for your mansion that you live in? <laughs> no, I actually pay for everything. Um, uh -huh. I pay a flat rate, around uh -huh. 3,000 a month. Because uh, the babush, because I rent out from a, a, a So you a pay $33 a month for electric? Yeah. That's actually Something pretty high. like that. That's actually pretty high. Is that your community fees too, though? I mean, it's everything. Oh, it's so everything. Uh, okay, that's your that's your hot water, your water, my your hot water, fees, electricity. Okay, my electricity, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine, yeah. and uh, yeah. Okay. So all his utilities, heat, which in Russia, a month. yeah, a month. So heat, hot water, normal water, and play, uh, I lift, pay a ma lift maintenance, garden maintenance, electricity, everything. He's paying thirty three dollars a month. Thirty dollars a month. Yeah, inclusive. Yeah, that, that's that's good. I, I was surprised because uh, you know it, our energy cost in the Philippines. My mom's telling me right now because also somewhere in the Philippines right now, Spain, like. I don't know, like uh, in peso, it's like 10,000 pesos. That's around, I don't know, uh, well. Four coconuts? <laughs> four coconuts, yeah. Around, I don't know, like 
Let's do a short math. Maybe uh, it's ten, one dollar is around fifty-eight peso right now. So like a hundred and hundred eighty dollars. Hundred eighty dollars, something okay. like that. Compared to thirty-three dollars, I'm sure somebody will calculate and correct us in the yeah, yeah, in the comments. In but, the okay. comments, because I, I don't you know, check the rates that, that's anymore. That's after quite a bit of minion juice we just spitballed it. Yeah, <laughs> and so yeah, the energy cost in the Philippines is quite high, and uh, that's I think one of the reasons uh, it's pulling the country down as well. Mm -hmm. Dependence on other countries in terms of energy is way uh, way. It's, it's total dependence. It's total mm -hmm. dependence. And that's one of the reasons also I moved here because I think it's going to get worse. I mean, uh, I think it's going to get worse because we don't have our own, you know, like I think we dug up one gas site, but, you know, uh, mm -hmm. I think Korean companies or U.S. companies or British companies uh, took contracts for there and, and uh, that's what happened, you know, so yep. in terms of territory, they, they, Russia has a lot of potential. As I've, as I've told you earlier, like to choose between a country uh, when everything goes down, I mean, I, I'm not wishing the shit hits the fad, the SHFT, you know, situation. But if the shit hits the fan, really, the one with resources and energy to keep up with uh, economic needs and demands mm -hmm. would be the one to survive. And Russia does have all these things. Most, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, most of these things they have. And since the 2014 event in, in Ukraine, uh, the president has been, you know, keen on having all the basic needs or everything that we need here in Russia be available and to be made here locally. Mm -hmm. And so uh, when uh, I, I guess I heard that one of his financial advisors or something, Ministry, Ministry of Finance, like at one point during the 2014, uh, well, history, um, one more sanction and Russia will really like go down. So he really made it a point that everything uh, we need is made here, like cheese, we locally manufactured milk and everything, meat, uh, basically that. So, um, yeah, communist cows are delicious. <laughs> they are. <laughs> I just GMO story, free. Like, uh, <laughs> hormone that, free. Oh, that also, that one also. Like to be honest, uh, one of the reasons also why we want to communist eggs <laughs> and communist coconuts. We do have it. Uh, one of the reasons also is the food. I mean, like uh, we're not being fed poison. Uh, we're not being fed, uh, you know, GMO stuff and you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, drinks with. Uh, with with poison in them, water is not poison, air is not poison. So that's one of the reasons. Also, if I want to raise a family, I want to raise a family where uh, you know uh, I wouldn't have to think about their health because mm -hmm. the food is poisoned or 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 you know like you got GMO in there and suddenly or in the future you'd be expecting cancers or or or, or diabetes and all these mm -hmm. metabolic metabolic uh, disease problems in the future. Also, uh, I think the culture, the culture is, is really rich. Mm -hmm. um, the literature, the art, I mean, it's all different. You guys should really check out Russian philosophy, culture, and everything. The country has a very, very rich culture, and uh, I think it, it would probably take you years and years to just get into them but it's very unique it's very nice and i love it uh one thing more is that with the culture the re government really spends uh money on 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 having these museums cultural parks events ballets you know theaters mm -hmm. and uh with the movies and they're all paid for by the government and sometimes you can just go in a museum and they but would socialism. have socialism like, <laughs> and that's what I, that's what also surprised me because mm -hmm. uh, for, for example you can just go to a park and there'd be this philharmonic uh, I, I don't know like orchestra playing and you can just go in for like less than 500 rubles or mm -hmm. 300 rubles can go in just like how it's like three dollars five dollars fifty to five dollars that's it and uh, you would really appreciate 
going outdoors here mean like the safety when you say going outdoors it means spending time outdoors not peeing outdoors <laughs> yeah. i felt really safe here like uh like what i told you earlier mm -hmm. during our first uh interview like the safety here is you know like you can just walk up to a policeman and or you can just walk up to somebody and ask for directions because when i got here i, I wasn't speaking any russian so mm -hmm. when, I got, when i got to the metro everyone's you know if not they're if if they're not really in a hurry if they're not late they'll be willing to show you the they, they'll they'll stop mm -hmm. open up their phone find out where you have to go explain to you if they know they'll even sometimes go with i've had like girls or you know like uh go to me just because I needed to go, for example, I needed to go to this place. Mm -hmm. I've had people, okay, I'll bring you there. And and that's very surprising for me. It's quite it's it's quite the surprise, to be honest. They didn't try to like slip a Mickey in your drink and take you somewhere? And... <laughs> no, no, never. I've never experienced that. Even in bars, like in the Philippines, mm -hmm. I've been in bars where when you're quite drunk, you know, mm -hmm. uh, they, they put... They, they boost your bill, they put, you know, they charge you for, for, for things that you haven't really consumed. But I've never experienced that here in Moscow. Uh, we, we do have some scams here, but yeah, we do it have usually gets, it's not so much the same scam, but sometimes tourists get it. The, the yeah. scam here is usually a honeypot where you'll hook up with some questionable woman, usually woman, on yeah. Tinder or whatever you want to call it here. And, and they'll invite you to a special bar, bar. and get special prices and the foreigner doesn't, they're afraid to call the police. But the thing is, if that happens, do call the police because the police are going to come take care of that bar. Yeah, but of a course. lot of foreigners are scared of. I, I that does happen here, unfortunately. But it's not as bad as even I know, um, like in Czech, Czech Republic, it's Czech. really bad in Prague, and mm -hmm. in Turkey, it's really bad. It does happen here, but it's you know as long as you know what you're doing, don't you know don't go off to a strange place without looking at the menu. Yeah, but it, it's it's not super common, but it does happen to tourists sometimes. Yeah, it does happen. I mean, I mean, we cannot deny the fact that it does happen, but. Uh, it never happened to me though. I've been yeah. uh, I've been quite uh, you know uh, defensive about my uh, careful about my you know dealings here. And uh, one thing that helped me, I guess, was having uh, true Russian friends. You know, like true friends who are Russian who really care about you. Mm -hmm. And uh, they'll here, tell the you, nightclubs are more likely to do that here. The the pricing thing here. Some of the nightclubs are a little. Yeah, I mean the nightclubs uh, here. Well. They're not generally expensive. They're, yeah. If you go to the right nightclub, and I'm saying where that type of scam happens here is there's certain nightclubs. But if you go with somebody who tells you where to go, you know, and, most, uh, of the the nightclubs, place, most of the nightclubs are going to be fine. Here. Yeah, of course. And uh, it's very convenient because most of the restaurants, nightclubs, and bars you can mm -hmm. find in a, an application called Yandex. Mm -hmm. And you got ratings there. You know, a five star rating. Or one it's Russian three. Google. Yeah, basically it's Russian Google. But it's even better, actually. Yeah, it's, it covers everything from scooters. Uh, taxi rides, deliveries, what yeah. else does it cover? Uh, well, well, basically, if, if you're going to go to some place, whether it's a nightclub or restaurant, you can just check it. You, you can just check and it you can out. see the rating, and if, if it's a scammy place, it's going to have bad ratings. Yeah. And, uh, of course, you can freely put the ratings there. And with the taxis as well, with the scooters, you can rate everything. So, uh, in the Philippines... They rate the we're... toilets here on the index, too. Yeah. The public toilets are rated. <laughs> I've seen some with five-star ratings. I've seen some with not-so-five-star ratings. And also the some, passenger like, you know, gets rating. Like, I didn't like the toilet. It was out of toilet paper. Uh, <laughs> they, they put that there, you know. Obviously. Yeah, of course. The passenger. That was before the operation. Now we, have, do... now we have plenty of toilet papers in special operation. <laughs> <laughs> the, the passengers also do get ratings. You know, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. uh, for yeah. example, you've been canceling rides or you, you're, you've been, you know, I don't know, like been unruly and in certain places you have vomited in the cab exactly uh, you'll get rating uh, as well uh, well for me that's it I mean the, it's generally people are are, are, are more how would they say like refined compared to other places that I've been yeah it's not the word I would use but I understand what you're going at yeah yeah they're more social there's more of a community feeling here than there is. And we talked about this with um, Ethan yeah. or Elijah, or, but there's there's more of a community feeling here than there is. People it's just, yeah, because... don't really live in a bubble. They, you know, they're out and about. And even now, I'll go out and I'll bump. It's exactly. amazing to walk around a city of six million people and to bump into people I will know just while I'm out in a city of six million people. I mean, well, of course, me, people recognize me. But I'm saying, in addition to getting recognized for, you know, the TikTok fugitive, I do run into friends and things as well sometimes. Yeah, it's quite surprising because uh, sometimes I run into classmates as well in the metro. Mm -hmm. uh, I run into people that I know I've, I've, I've been, uh, yeah. Because uh, you only go through like uh, 
a few lines and really go see it. You can see mm -hmm. each other there. It's, it's, uh, that, that would be one of the things that I couldn't live without anymore. Just, I think I can't live in any other place besides Russia anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be honest, now that I've experienced this kind of, you know, life. Do you encourage people to come as tourists here? Yeah, I do. I do encourage But I mean, guys. there's a war going on. Aren't they going to be bombed or... Of I course not. I mean, like, it's one of the safest... You're investigated by the KGB when they come across the border. <laughs> it's one of the safest places to be in, guys. Mm -hmm. I, I, I swear. I mean, like, uh, at night, you would see, you know, policemen uh, patrolling uh, these parks. Uh, uh, streets are well, well lit. Uh, it's not a hassle walking. Directions are... are or you can just ask for it. You have mm -hmm. your, your your phone to, to go anywhere. And the way I explain it to people is that, you know, during when the U.S. was in Vietnam, people didn't like, oh, don't go to the U.S. because they're in a war. And to be honest, it's a lot like that. Life's going on here. Whatever you think of the conflict, war, whatever you want to call it, life's going on here. Life is normal. Life and, is um, very normal, yeah. We're, we're, you know, obviously cognizant of what's going on, but Americans, they were in Iraq, Afghanistan, and people weren't like, oh, don't go to America because they're in Iraq. But, yeah. you know, it's not, yeah, it's not true. I mean, here it's so quiet, so peaceful. I mean, like the only problem that I've you know, seen, uh, like, for example, in Moscow, of course, you get those road accidents, mm -hmm. but you don't get the same road rage. I just heard uh, maybe a week ago, two weeks ago, uh, one of my, like my brother uh, just had the road rage uh, situation gun, mm -hmm. uh, gun pointed at his head can you imagine here they we do have it and russians say it's a huge problem but having seen what happened in other countries road rage here is a lesser of a problem it's a lesser and they of a tend problem. to get out and just duke it out with their fists yeah that is a bit of a thing here i won't say it's yeah. it's, it's, it's less common it's killed yeah i mean like yeah, in it's, the Philippines? It's, it's much less common than even in the u.s i mean they don't they're not going to smash you the car but often sometimes after well, when i lived in turkey or other places man you can expect a fight here Get a car accident, you'll be okay. But I, I have, you know, there are some instances people get out and they do get out a little bit. But it doesn't last long. People break it up. Yeah, I mean, like, uh, they can, you know, just settle it, you know, yeah. mano, mano. Sometimes as we they call do. It. Mano, y mano. And then after that, it's okay. I mean, like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's quite funny. But yeah, sometimes they drink some mini juice together and... You know, yeah. So, I guess that's it. I mean, for me, that's... Those are the things like I can't I can't live anymore without. I mean I can't live without anymore. The the, the, the transpo system, the people, the place, the culture. Cool. Well, thanks for the time. We're gonna finish our minion juice and then we're gonna go try not to get mugged on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, by the way, where's my phone? I left my phone there. It's charging. Yeah. Nobody's taking yeah, see, it. He just left his phone inside. We're outside the restaurant. Just a phone inside. Be perfectly safe there. So. It's, it's there. You know, yeah. it's, it's charging there. Nobody's taking it. Yep. In so. the Philippines, you just look one way, yeah. look back, your phone's gone. And you know, the funny thing is if somebody did swipe it, the police will check the security cameras and they'll most likely track them down. Because I've seen, in, I, in, see, I see news articles all the time of like, in, in one, like time somebody was, you know, sometimes some, one time a lady lost her phone in the restaurant. She just lost it and somebody decided, okay, well, they found it later. And the police still track the person down. <laughs> it's like, you know. <laughs> so. And remember the Crocos event, they got... To the, to the to those people in in a matter of hours yeah it's amazing how 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 it works and there's this event again like uh, i don't know if we heard uh, some terrorists in dagestan mm -hmm. uh, yeah they got to them down one got them in like a minutes three minutes mm -hmm. they, they 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 solved the whole situation yeah it's pretty amazing so we're gonna go check on Juan's phone but it's there it's still there <laughs> it's still there okay then we're trying to get mugged sure. on the way home all yeah. right thanks guys Bye.